Welcome back to the series of Light Reading Conversations. Terry Sweeney here, contributing editor to Light Reading, and I'm joined now by Rob Shores, Senior Vice President of Marketing for Infinera. Rob, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Let's start by talking about what the key challenges are for operators, um, things that they're facing now, things that they can see on the horizon. What, what do you see from that perspective? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, look, of course, Infinera is a uh, optical networking connectivity solution provider. So we typically look at things through that lens. And what are the biggest challenges that network operators are facing from that perspective? Uh, well, I, I hope everybody's sitting down for this because it's going to be really shocking. Uh, nobody's probably ever said this before, but uh, bandwidth is growing <laughs> and it continues to grow. It, it's obviously that's a continual challenge customers have. Bandwidth is growing. The need for bandwidth is growing typically far faster than uh, the revenue is growing. So continually finding ways to augment the scale of their network uh, cost effectively is critical. But one of the really big challenges that they're facing is what's happening at the edge of the network with 5G, enhanced broadband, higher speed enterprise services, cloud-based services. It's really this massive explosion of uh, bandwidth at the edge of the network in particular, the network operators are really struggling with how to, how to meet that cost effectively. It, it seems as if they're juggling uh, the advent of new technology, uh, competition, of course, and to a lesser extent, even some, some political situations. Um, th I mean, this is a lot to juggle and, and a lot for, I guess, an operator to, to consider as they, as they try to do their forecasting. How, how do you help there? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, as you said, one of the other challenges, of course, is the business side of things and how cloud-based services impact them, uh, how do uh, cloud content providers, uh, how do they access their customers, how do traditional network operators uh, maintain their revenue streams as more services move to the cloud. The biggest thing that we can do to help is try to facilitate those and simplify those network architectures, make it easy for network operators to add the capacities they need, respond more rapidly uh, to their end customer's demand, provide value added enhanced services like man with on demand, uh, like uh, automatically reroutable bandwidth. So if they want to go from one data center to another data center, they can reconnect very rapidly. But another area that we can really help is particularly at the edge of the network. There are ways in which optical technology can really transform the way network operators build those networks. Uh, and what I'm specifically talking about is a technology uh, we call point to multi-point coherent optics. Okay. Um, and these are really uh, radical ways to change the network architecture to significantly redu re reduce uh, CapEx and OpEx. So there's linear progressions that we can make as we go to new generations of coherent technology. Uh, they provide linear improvements in uh, cost and operations. But there are also some radical things that we can do, like these point to multi-point technologies um, that can really have a, a substantial impact on their ability to offer these services in a differentiated way. It sounds like you're pushing more intelligence and certainly more physical presence out, out to the edge, which typically wasn't the case, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's kind of two things. Historically, you can only do point to multi-point applications electrically. That's what we had routers and switches for. So you'd have to put routers and switches at all these intermediate locations to be able to do that distribution of service. Uh, what we're trying to do now is enable that in the optical domain uh, with these multi-point technologies, along with the intelligence to dynamically distribute bandwidth in the optical domain uh, dynamically as bandwidth is needed by each of these different locations. Rob, from your perspective, I mean, what, what do you see as some of the key optical innovations that, that can help solve some of these network operator challenges? Well, yeah, you know, optics really follows a lot of the same um, trajectories that Moore's Law does. Uh, optics, okay. in particular, for coherent technology has two different parts, a, a digital signal processor, uh, which is directly in line with Moore's Law. It's just a processor in the optical engine. Um, so we can continue to evolve those different generations. But we also have the analog engine as well. Um, now, in Finera, we, we do this all in a photonic integrated circuit, which is also a semiconductor technology and has similar types of Moore law, Moore's law progression. So what we can really do is two things, right? Continue to advance technologies, continue to use iterative generations of uh, available CMOS uh, node processes, um, but also to provide innovations to it as well. In Finera, in general, has been founded on the concept of innovation, trying to do things that, uh, frankly, a lot of people said couldn't be done whether that's the uh, large-scale photonic integrated circuit or even using Nyquist subcarriers as transmission techniques. And now, of course, the latest innovation is these uh, uh, subcarrier-based multi-point uh, optics. 
Because what we really want to do is we really want to continue to try to find ways to do more than just linear progression. Uh, we really want to have innovative technologies that can change the overall mathematical equations, economic equations uh, for our network operator customers so they can really do substantially different things with their network, offer new types of services in ways that never uh, really were possible before. Rob, just to, to close here, from your perspective, what are, what are Infinera's key solutions, investment, and, and strategies that, that help network operators with this, this brave future? Great question. I mean, obviously, the optical engines themselves, these coherent optical engines. So we have an organization called the Optical Innovation Center, which is really drives uh, progression in this type of technology. But there's another angle to it, too. It's one thing to come up with great technology, but it, you also have to enable network operators to be able to introduce that technology into their ecosystems. So we're really trying to promote these concepts of open networking. And open is not just the ability to uh, pick and choose from lots of different vendors. That's certainly a, be a key part of it. It's also the ability, as we come up with new generations of technologies for our customers, to be able to enable them to introduce those technologies more rapidly. Um, because this both coming up with technologies and rapidly integrating those technologies into their network um, is really key, we think, for our customers' long-term viability. And we've seen this, by the way, with the cloud operators. They've really pioneered this and, and shown the way on how very rapid integration of new technologies can substantially help uh, business models provide more cost-effective networks that enable new types of services. So combination of the heavily investment in new optical engine technology, as well as promoting and enabling open networking solutions so that customers can get access to those, questions, uh, those technologies rapidly. Well, Rob, some great perspectives on edge networking and uh, an expanded role for, for optics there. Thanks for joining us today. Great. Yep. Thanks for having me. We've been talking with Rob Shore of Infinera. This has been Terry Sweeney with Light Reading. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time.